Jack here said they're running a little late. Uh, okay, we'll we'll give it a few minutes. Cool. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, I got into something on Twitter. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, Autumn, it's viral. You're all over the internet right now. Are you kidding me? You're fighting with a Grammy Award winning rapper, so no. Fuck. Yeah, I am, huh? Why are you starting Twitter beef with the 1% Autumn? I started. Lorenzo East wanted to catch an attitude with me. I'm simply catching one back. What did you say? Uh-uh, this man entered my mentions, quoting that New York Times article about Rusty Chain. The New York Times wrote an article about the show you directed? Yeah, the piece was kind of controversial, and so I was talking shit about black men, and so now he's playing in my phone saying some all black women know how to do is emasculate the black man. Huh? Emasculate? Emasculate? Is he kidding me? Did he read the play, see the show, or even read the article? Clearly not. He all the way over here in our business. He needs to be all the way over there in misogynistic ass nigga business, mowing lawns and yelling on Clubhouse where he belongs. Right. Now, because he's a black person with a little stature, he's suddenly qualified to speak on shit he don't know about. Yeah. I actually just saw this interview with Lorenzo East, and they were asking for his opinions on, like, Black liberation. Right. He don't organize. That nigga makes beats. Why is he suddenly the great Negro spokesperson? I swear they just be picking anybody and calling it representation. Throwing any random group of niggas in a room to start a dialogue. Seriously. Now I'm wasting rehearsal time beefing with this dude. In fact, let me stop. I just hate somebody who speaks on things they don't know about. But let me not shade Jack here. What is up with you and Jack here? Y'all have been fighting a lot. The vibes are very weird. I don't like them. Clearly. But why? Girl, what? You were in the show. What show? Jakir's senior thesis. Fetal? Yeah. Did that show sound like anything Jakir ever wrote in college? Did you... Did they steal your idea? My life story, damn near. The whole plot is just personal stuff I told Jakir in undergrad. Oh my god. They didn't ask me, didn't check in. I confided in them as a friend, and then I saw an over-dramatized version of me getting kicked out of my house when I was 17 on stage. Autumn, I am so sorry. I had no idea you were Summer. Oh. Yeah. I just assumed you knew. Thank you. That, that actually means a lot. It's just hard knowing that a traumatic story they didn't actually develop is the thing that made them this up and coming playwright. I can only imagine how frustrating that must be. And now I have to work with them. I know Liz only hired me because she needed a woman on the creative team. And I only said yes because I need the money. Bigger theaters don't really want to hire me anymore since my last show caused so much commotion. So if she even picks up this show, I'll have rent money for the next like three months. I just can't believe this. They really had me thinking they came up with that show concept. Yeah. And I know at some point I'm going to have to talk to them about it, but... I don't really want to. And yeah, so I let Lorenzo Kunas know that that one little progressive point he made in 2004 is irrelevant, as is he, as is his music career, and I told him to stay his ass out of black women business. Period. Hey, y'all. Sorry I'm late. Hey. Hi. So... Did y'all already talk about Liz Vernon's second email? She sent another email? Yeah, her apology, like 20 minutes ago. Go look. 
My beautiful BIPOC creatives, I'm writing to deeply, sincerely apologize for my missent email. It shed light on the ways I have left to go toward an anti-racist ethic. If I offended any of you or made light of the treasure troves that are your black and brown bodies, that was not my intention. I hope that you do not view me any differently for this. Know that I love BIPOC people. Thank you in advance for your understanding and continual support as I grow and learn. See you Friday, your friend, Liz. What? Like that was so many words to just say nothing. Notes app as apology. Like that's just so typical. Sorry for being racist. Love y'all BIPOC. See you Friday. Black and brown bodies, BIPOC people. Like we're all black. No, you can just say that. <laughs> After all this, you still don't want to consider other options? <sighs> other options like what? Like New Vanguard Theater. This again? Like, what's wrong with New Vanguard? They have a black artistic director team. They produce local playwrights. They do free community programs. And they have a lateral creative structure. What does that even mean? Like, there are no traditional Western hierarchies. Everyone's a collaborator. Like a collective. Like a collective. But who's to say that can't be the new standard for theater? Like normal people? <laughs> I also don't remember you lacking this much imagination in undergrad. Are you kidding me? Is it fighting every day with you two? God. Can you just consider it? I think the piece would be better for it. Why? Because we spend more rehearsal time arguing about this theater than we do workshopping the piece. I'll think about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say I was a pretty shit writer back then. Well, no, I wasn't completely awful, but I was just such a phony. You know, the number one thing they tell you to do is write what you know about. What did I do? Not that. <laughs> wrote about shit I did not know about. Out here writing about black women like I'm Tyler Perry. <laughs> uh, but the gag is I'm neither, so I wrote a poem about that. <laughs> I am turning into a lady right in front of your very eyes. Blink, and you'll miss it. So you watch me intensely waiting and looking for me to slip up, slip on a dress. I slip up and on and what does that make me? That can't be. A lady. No. Well I say no but you see yes. You see me slip up and sell my manhood away like I'm signing my soul over to Satan. Sin. I slip on a dress and you see sin. You see a sinful lady. I am turning into a lady right in front of your very eyes. Could have been green, or white, or gray, but you made me blue. And I don't want to be pink, but I don't want to be blue. Can't I be purple? They say that shade matches my skin the best anyway. I am turning into a lady in front of your very eyes, and you're green. With envy or with disgust, I haven't yet decided. Not which one best describes you, but how much of each make up your palette when you look at me. Watching and waiting as I scrub off the blue and slip into purples and grays and whites and blacks. Watching and waiting for me to turn pink, for me to turn into a lady in front of your very eyes. Hey everyone, can we jump right in today? I have some things I want to play around with. Yeah, of course we can. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, it's your room. Okay. Ayana, can we jump to page 32 and look at this moment real quick? Uh, yeah, one second, sorry. Jakir, have you thought any more at all about what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do about? Liz and this theater? I mean, no, there's not much to think about. Just because Liz isn't at other theaters doesn't mean we wouldn't be dealing with the same shit. 
like sure at most other regional theaters, but I don't think NVT is out sending racist emails like that. It's not just about being booked. Then what is it about? We are literally artists trying to get booked. It's about integrity and not feeling the need to play into every opportunistic call that comes your way. Is it opportunistic or is it a genuine opportunity? The difference being. I thought you had ideas you wanted to play with. What happened to those? Wow. Okay, Ayana, do you have the page? Yep. Okay, can we hear this and then discuss? Of course. Uh, one second. I'm trying to scream. I'm trying to scream as I lie in this bed. I wish I could tell these fucking doctors it's their fault. It's their fault that I'm dying. If they just listened to me, heard me, I wouldn't have to be screaming or trying to scream. Screams move from my mouth, but they don't escape my lips. I lost the ability to shout long ago, so now I just lie immobile, muffled by my own mouth. Yeah, so we can stop there. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty loaded. I love that passage. Yeah, me too. And I'm interested in how you feel about it coming from your own perspective as an artist. Hmm. I haven't been thinking enough about how I'm an artist playing a dying performer in this piece. I want to connect with what Amari's going through to my own experience as a Black actress, but I'm worried it's too obvious. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about that. I think we can- How is that obvious? Well, I would say that because Amari landed in the hospital as a result of being overworked in rehearsal, the same screams she wants the doctors to hear are the same screams she wants everyone in the audience to hear. That's exciting. So let's talk more about I mean, what it- But that's what it is. How is that obvious? Okay, so maybe it's not obvious, but it's surface. The theater neglected Amari. The hospital neglected Amari. The black woman is neglected. Cool. What's next? Yes. Okay. Like we've been acknowledging that neglect rules the black feminine experience for a while now, right? Now what can we say about how to fix that? And because I'm going through some of the same things as Amari, thinking of Liz, the toxic environment she's created and that email especially, I can't give Amari an answer because I don't have one. That's a good point. What is the answer? I have some ideas from the script's loose ending, but before I speak, does the playwright have any comments? The playwright does have comments. Thank you, director. The solution is that there isn't one, but more importantly, it's not in other people. I'm worried this discussion of Liz is influencing the interpretation of the piece. Ayana responding to relevant events around her is messing with her interpretation of your open-ended writing? No, Ayana projecting her issues with having to work in toxic environments is influencing her interpretation. Am I not supposed to react to racism? Am I just supposed to be complicit in this environment to avoid having an actual conversation? But what's the conversation that needs to be had? The way I see it, she's a liberal white woman who took one cultural competency training and thinks she's done the work. Name a white person who hasn't. There is no white person who has completely unlearned their racism. What's worse, this or pretending that black artists don't exist at all? What's worse is a black playwright knowing that and still throwing someone else's black pain on a stage to get a gig. So we're still doing that, Autumn? Um, excuse me? Doing what exactly? The stupid senior thesis slander. I just thought you'd have gotten out of your system by now, that's all. Gotten what out of my system? My trauma being written about without my permission? See, like, why are you sitting there acting like I didn't ask for your insight before I wrote the piece? Because you didn't. Asking for insight doesn't look like vaguely mentioning the idea of me being a muse for a character and then writing an entire play about me. And then casting me in it. Developing this piece not knowing the whole time, it's just ripped from someone else. Do you know how embarrassing it was to find out that piece was stolen? Oh, it was a stolen piece now? I stole the piece I wrote? <sighs> you know what? I might be mistaken. 
I didn't realize that Jakir was pulling from their own experience as a black woman who got kicked out of her house at age 17 when writing that piece. Did I not say that the character would be inspired by you? And really, Ayana, embarrassing. Was it embarrassing to get booked because of my piece? Did you not get paid because of that piece? It's not about getting paid. It's not about the money and connections and networking. Is that all it's about to you? Like a love for theater doesn't matter. No, the issue is that I do love theater. I just hate- Actually caring about other people. Got it. Oh my God, this is so- What do you hate then, Jock here? I hate this fucking conversation. I hate that we can't move on. And I hate that you keep making this all about you. I had to watch all the intimate shit I revealed to you in private just be displayed on a stage. Like it was trivial. And for what? For my career, yeah. Yeah, I wrote the piece knowing that it would do well. I was not about to let those four years I spent getting that expensive ass degree go to waste. I knew it would get me in the rooms I needed to be in and get my name in the correct mouths. But you didn't have to exclude me from even having a voice. Why do you act like only one of us can contribute a thought at a time? People barely hire one black playwright, let alone two. It was a college showcase. We could have done that piece together. It could have been our show. And you definitely could have told me before I performed it. Why didn't you include us from the jump? Because I didn't care. I didn't care about your opinions or your thoughts and feelings. I cared about having a career, about being in this industry and working with people that I admire. So are you happy with your career now? Autumn, I, I wanna make art. That's the only thing I have going for me. How am I supposed to do that without following industry expectations? I don't think wanting to make art has anything to do with a want or a need to be in any industry. <laughs> That's a convenient opinion to have when you don't have student loans to pay off. And I definitely want to be a professional artist. I can't speak for you. I still have to pay rent, Jakir, and you can be a professional artist without having to entertain all of the shitty professional expectations. You didn't have to exploit me for your piece. You just felt like you needed to. See, like here we are with the language. Exploit? What are we doing? Did you not exploit her? Did you not take advantage of me? You talk a lot about negligence and Amari feeling the need to scream. I'm screaming. Autumn's screaming. Hell, you're screaming too and you just don't know it. If they just listened to me, heard me, I wouldn't have to be screaming. You wrote that. You feel that. And you think there's no way out. You don't like having to change your art for other people. You don't like having to compromise your work just for the sake of an audience. You didn't want to change page 44. You want something else. We all want something else. Sure. I want something else. I wish I didn't. Well, what's done is done. I wish things had gone differently. Yeah, I wish a lot too. So where do we go from here? <laughs>